Well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're about to start. Hopefully, everyone's got a seat. Have you got chairs there? If not, we can get some more. And we're just about going live, I think, on, on, on you. We're live now on YouTube. So first of all, a warm welcome to you all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, in doing so, you're supporting our amazing community hall. Uh, and we are so, so grateful for that. Uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to in introduce Raphael, who's joining us this evening. Uh, Raphael is the project manager of the Kapakeli Action Plan in the Black Forest in the southwest of, of Germany. Looking, across, scanning across the audience there, uh, I can see that there is a considerable knowledge of the Cairngorm National Park, of the habitats of the park, um, and it's quite a, you're quite a fearsome sight, I can tell you. <laughs> Thankfully, Raphael, I think oh, you don't know any of these people. <laughs> um, but there's a great opportunity for us this evening uh, to learn from Raphael because of his knowledge of the Black Forest and the Kapakeli, Kapakeli project there as well. Um, so you're most welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you. And if, if there's any fighting or anything like that, we'll, 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 we'll deal with it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Over to you. So, hello um, uh, all to you. Um, I'm very happy to be here. And a big thank you it's going to Caroline from the Kapakeli Project and also to Uwe um, uh, Stoneman because they organize, uh, organized everything. Um, uh, and also big thank you to people I met this week. I was coming last Monday and every day I had meetings uh, with people and we're outside in the forest and uh, we uh, talked a lot about Kapakeli, 24 hours and it was amazing. Um, another good thing is uh, because uh, I, I could practice my rusty English language. So also thank you. And if you um, looked at the slides and there's maybe uh, some word is not right written or something like this, excuse, but I think you will understand me. Okay. Um, can we start? Yeah. No signal. Technology, no pressure. Technology. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay, the next uh, 45 to 60 minutes, I will uh, tell you a little bit about the Black Forest uh, in uh, Germany and, of course, about the Kapakeli because I'm working in the Black Forest National Park. <laughs> in the Department of uh, Wildlife Management, and I have a lot of different topics. So I am uh, do the monitoring for red deer and deer, and also the management, and also uh, monitoring for lynx and wolf. But one of the main topic I have since years is the Kapakeli. And uh, we have a quick look at the map. Working. No signal. Yeah. 
Deixa eu ver aqui. Ok. Ok. Um, you are seeing the map uh, from your area, and just to have a look where I was last week. So at the first day, I was in Kinwechi and in Rochi Markets. Um, where we are talking a lot um, about uh, Kapukele and the management. And the next day, I was uh, in Ebonesi, followed by Glenmore Forest Park in Glenfishy. Um, uh, at Friday, we were in Glen Tana. Today, I was at the meeting from the Kapokeli project group, and now we are in the boat of garden. So you see, I was on a lot of places, um, saw different, different uh, forests and talked with different people. If we uh, look on the map from Germany, you saw a lot of different colors. The, Greenish colors uh, are the forests in Germany. Um, red are the um, cities and villages. Blue is the water. And the other things are the Greenland and uh, the agriculture. If you look on the uh, southwestern side, you see a big green area. This one this is the Black Forest. The Black Forest uh, is a uh, um, uh, it's a big forest with about 6,000 uh, square kilometers and um, uh, we have a typical landscape like you see here we have deep villages uh, deep uh, valleys and also the mountainous ridges this is what the what is typical for the black forest then what i said we have a lot of uh, forests uh, uh, huge areas all is covered with um, the most of them is covered with forest we have um, uh, we have also um, many lakes, glacial lakes. We have open. Just a minute. I hope this is working now. The technique. No problem. Maybe you have a better, better hand than I. Okay. Try it again, and then we have also open, open areas. Um, and also our forest. Of, uh, we have a lot of streams and rocky areas, just uh, uh, that you can see how the uh, landscape is looking like. The wildlife, we have a lot of hoofed animals, um, uh, for example, the red deer, the roe deer. We have also wild boars in uh, some areas. We have mouflon and we have also chamois in some areas. Then we have, for example, uh, reptiles like the crossed order. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <coughs> Not work. Okay. Um, then we have also mesopredators like uh, pine marten, stone marten, um, foxes, of course, badger we have, uh, and also the top predators like uh, wolf and lynx. And of course, we of course we have a lot of bird, birds, and the amazing capocali. <laughs> What is very important for our region is uh, the Kabakali have ever been there. Um, and this is the people have a, have a very strong relationship to their forests. Right. Technique. 
to the forest. Uh, the most people that have worked in the forest or lived in the forest. So they have a very strong relationship and also a relationship to their wild animals, especially the red deer. Um, there's, a, there's a hunting tradition and also the capocaili was uh, hunted in the past. And the people like the capocaili very much. Um, they have a close relationship to the forest and wildlife and to, uh, to the capocaili. We see this today, for example, in our heraldic, uh, in our district town, we have uh, uh, the heraldic animal is on the logo. Also restaurants and hotels uh, is the logo, the name of the uh, hotels. Then some, uh, some roots, forest roots is the name with capocaili. Um, we have in the forest some huts, their name is Capocaili Hut or what else. And we have field names like Leaking Place or the Great uh, Forest of the Hands and so on. So um, there's a strong relationship. And also some people are painting, uh, painted the uh, Capocaili on the houses because they like the animals so much. And it's very important for them uh, that we have the Capocaili in our area. Uh, we are looking back to the um, uh, to the map, and if you are looking on the north from the Black Forest, here is the uh, Black Forest National Park situated. Uh, he is uh, 100 square kilometer, um, and this is where I am working and living. Um, some facts about it: uh, we are almost 10 years. So it established uh, was the Black National Black Forest National Park in 2014. Um, about 10,000 hectare. There are no villages. Most of the area is uh, forest. Then we have uh, the rest are some lakes and some uh, open areas. Um, what is special this is no ancient old growth forest. The most of the forests are man made. Um, we are, um, because after the Second World War, a lot of uh, timber was, um, was sent out. And so um, the people plant a lot. Um, the sea level is from 470 to 1,151. Um, we have a rainfall annual from over 2,000 millimeter. Um, and the temperature is about 5 grad in a mean annual temperature. I showed it before, the same um, for the Black Forest National Park. We have a variety of wildlife. And what is important or the difference also to the region here, um, uh, our tree species, 70 percentage of the tree species is um, spruce. Then we have 12% uh, percentage fir, um, followed by pine, beech, and um, other broad leaves. To introduce our national park in the landscape, I have a short movie, I hope working. No, it's not working. Wait. It's about two or three minutes. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, the object of the National Park, uh, it's a little bit different uh, to here. Um, uh, 
we want to uh, promote the uh, natural processes. So um, uh, we said that you accept uh, what the nature is doing. So um, do not so much management to accept, not to manage everything. And uh, the aim is, of course, as you have on a small scale, um, different stages uh, of forests, for example, of old growth forests, you have open spaces, you have uh, standing dead wood, you have um, regeneration or thickets and so on. Then you have lying um, dead wood so that you have uh, a lot of habitats on a small scale. And um, for example, in this picture, you see it's a little bit an open area. You see um, lying dead wood, you see some small trees, you see speaker trees. This is the idea of the, um, uh, of the of the nature. Um, the objective is rewilding the man-made forests and the nature should be the, the manager. This is the idea of the Black Forest National Park in Germany. And of course, these, these are very, they're very different structures and also the structures is what the, what the Kappa Kali uh, likes. For example, here it's uh, a lying tree um, from a little wind blow and uh, the male Kapakeli uses as a dust bath. But this is what I told is theory. Um, we know that man made forests uh, could change very soon. Now I have an example. We have here 1998, there was an old growth for forest. Um, in 1999, there came the famous uh, wind blow the Lota, the name was Lota, and I, okay, we are back. <laughs> um, um, and, and then now you follow the pictures. Uh, every year, every two years, we made a picture. So you say it was after the wind blow. The no. okay, back. Um, we see the lying dead wood there. Look at this tree in the middle. If you have a little, and uh, you can orientate you. Here you see how the how the trees are growing, how fast they are growing. And if you look, 2017, and this is from the last year, 2022. It's completely dense. So this is, of course, if you have man-made forests, this is where you handle with. There's maybe uh, huge areas. Uh, affected by a wind blow or by the bark beetle and so on and then you have not the small patches we would like to prefer what i showed before in this in the slide before that you have on a small scale different uh, structures and so then maybe you have on a large scale um uh, a homogeneous forest I, okay <laughs> Ah. <laughs> okay. And if you look at the beginning, for example, after the wind blow, this was a this was a good habitat for the capercaillie. Now it's so dense there is no no capercaillie anymore, and this is what we have to handle with. Um, if we uh, think about uh, different species for uh, for example, we have uh, species in the forest. They, uh, they prefer, um, for example, the structures with a lot of uh, dead wood, fresh dead wood, like here, the tree toad woodpecker, also a very uh, um, uh, protected and rare bird, but he likes to eat bark beetles, so he needs fresh um, um, dead wood, for example. But we have different animals, and you can say they won't prefer the natural processes, they under need the management from the man. And with the Kapokali, we are between. And this is what we have to handle with, of course. If you are looking at the national park, we have three zones. Uh, the, the darker green zone is the so-called core zone. This is about 50 percentage of the whole area. And there is the idea that you make nothing. So no forestry, no hunting nothing Na the nature is the manager how i uh, said it before um their objective is that in 2044 
75% uh, of the whole national park um, uh, is the, co uh, the core zone. And this is uh, why we have the development zone. Um, this is the, the, the light green color. Um, this zone should be in 2044 um, uh, uh, association to the core zone. And at this zone at the moment, we can also uh, make uh, conservation projects and so on. We are able to do uh, management. And then uh, we have the management zone. It's 25 percentage of the whole area. And on this zone, we're coming back. On this zone, this will be forever management zone. This is where we will um, hunt the red deer, where we will um, uh, make the bark beetle management and so on to protect our neighbors. So I try to come back that you see something. I hope because of the technical situation, you have a lot of more time to see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and now um, we, are, we have to handle uh, with the situation. We want on a whole area yeah, or a large area, we want to do nothing. And, we, uh, and maybe there will come in a wind blow or something like that, that we have, that we have homogeneous forest. But on the other side, we have to protect the Kabukele. So what should we do? Uh, there is the... Uh, conservation, uh, the EU conservation of wild birds, and on the other side is the national, national park law. Also, we have the species conservation, and on the other side is protection of natural processes. So it's not easy to handle with uh, species like the Kabukele when you are coming from a man-made forest. But in our um, uh, Kabukele management, we have uh, special permits in the Black Forest that we also can do management where we need it um, for the Kapokele in the core zone. Because you know um, the Kapokele is treated with extinction in Germany and our federal state Baden-Württemberg. And we have to maintain um, this species or try to maintain it as best as we can. If you are looking at the distribution area in the whole Black Forest, um, you see um, uh, the green and the yellow color, and this was the distribution in 1993, and the green color distribution in 2080. So every five years, we, uh, we collect all the data from the Black Forest um, and look how big is the distribution area. We see, for example, in 1993, we ha have 600 uh, square kilometers, 2008, is just um, 344 square kilometers. We, we lost a lot of our area, and it's also because of the loss of the habitat. If we are, when we are look on the whole area here, you can see um, uh, the, the red patches are the distribution area. We see in the middle, there's a big gap, and this is where we where we lost a lot of habitat and there are just a few Kapokalis in this area, but that we have an exchange between the two areas. Of course, we have to improve the habitat there. <laughs> I hope it's working now. Come on. Nah. Okay, you're back. So the idea on the Black Forest is uh, that we ex uh, make uh, that we ex uh, expand the area. So this is the the yellow patches. These are habitats we want to improve. Uh, at the moment, is no Kapokele. The red is where is Kapokele, and the white lines are corridors. So we would like to have. Um, more Kabakali area and connect all the uh, the areas uh, through the whole Black Forest. Now, a quick look on the population situ situation. 
1920, we had uh, about 3,800 males. We are, we are counting all the time the males we are displaying. In 1971, we had 570. And now we have just 97. The last count from the last year was just 97. So um, from 1970 on, on, we are counting them um, every year. Um, uh, we make lead counts where we count the, the males. Also in uh, 1971, um, the people realized uh, that uh, the numbers are declining. And so um, there was a hunting ban. Till 1971, it was possible to hunt Kapokele in the Black Forest. In 2008, um, we had a Kapokele action plan where we said, OK, we have to increase the numbers. We have to increase the, uh, the, all the, the distribution area and so on. Then in uh, 2019, there was the evaluation of the action plan. And there we saw every objectives we had, uh, we reached none of them. So the, the distribution area was smaller than before, the numbers were smaller than before, and so on and so on. And now in uh, 2022, it was a historical year in a negative way, because this was the first time we had under 100 um, displaying males. So you see in this graph, no, you do not see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, uh, you see, we have a negative trend in the population. It's a very dramatic situation. And the cover is treated with extension in the Black Forest. We are looking in the north. Um, uh, this is uh, where the Black uh, Forest National Park is situa uh, situated. We are in the core area of the Kapokele in the Black Forest. Um, on the right side, you, uh, you see the National Park. And you see um, uh, the green area is, this, uh, is most of the um, Black Forest National Park is a special protected area um, and uh, 6,000 hectares of the Black Forest National Park is Kapokele area. But also we had the same problem like in the whole Black Forest that we are declining. When we were uh, established in 2040, we had to have, uh, 56 males and the last year we had 70, 17 males. The evaluation showed us three uh, problems or challenges we have. First of all, there's a loss of suitable habitat. Um, I said before that we have a lot of spruce and the spruce in the Black Forest is very um, fast growing and it's uh, overgrowing. So we see, for example, here uh, the picture, um, how, how fast it's growing and uh, it's, um, uh, the spruce uh, is in competition with the, um, with the blueberries, for example. Although only another thing is that our blueberries are very high. They are uh, up to 80 centimeters, often sometimes 90 centimeters. It's too high for the Kapokele. This is also um, one of our problem. Then, of course, we have a lot of people um, in the Black Forest and in the National Park so it's increasing in the disturbance. And of course, the, the stress level is increasing. And uh, the, the, the last problem or challenge is that we have an increasing mortality and less productivity in the national park and in the whole black forest. So um, what are the conclusion? Um, we have no time, no more time for uh, discussion. If you want to do anything for the bird, we, uh, um, we need immediate actions to react for the core problems. Um, now, because we are too late. We are, um, made a Kapokele emergency plan where we have a few different topics. First of all, 
we made a lot of research, um, habitat improvement, habitat management, also the wildlife management is included in the Kabakali plan, and also the visitor guidance and information. Have a quick look to the research and monitoring. Of course, we do it like we do it every year, um, the monitoring at the LEX. Then we have since uh, 1996 in this area, we have uh, so-called chicken monitoring or the monitoring of the reproduction. So we have transects in our breeding area and up from August, um, we walk the transects, look, uh, look um, how many chicks per hen, what is the, and what is the, the gender of the chicks, that we can look how is the reproduction, the productivity. Then also we collect every feather what we will find in the black forest to um, uh, make an analysis of the have we an inbreeding problem or not. Um, we, um, two or three days ago, I got the results now. We have a genetic diversity, so um, uh, it's no inbreeding problem at the moment. Um, and compared to other regions in uh, Europe, uh, it is also okay till now, but we will never know what is happening in the next years. Um, also, we did um, habitat monitoring and assessment. We are looking in our forest, how good is our habitat that we can, uh, that we see uh, what we have to do. Um, uh, um, uh, is there a fragmented habitat or not? Do we need corridors and so on? We do it over the whole um, national park. And of course, we do an evaluation of the habitat improvement. So um, when we uh, made um, for the Kapakali um, habitat improvement, later on, we are looking, you, do they use it or not? Like you can see it here on the picture. And uh, we make a monitoring of the predators. Um, last year, we started with the pine marten. Um, uh, we had uh, sticks in the forest that put a little bit fish oily on it. And um, we created a picture like uh, this, what you are seeing. And uh, then we can see what throat patterns they have. And this is unique, like our thumb or the skin of a zebra or the skin of a lynx and so on. And so we can calculate how is the density of the pine marten. The same we will do this year with the fox by collecting um, uh, fox cats and uh, um, looked at the <laughs> DNA and the in how many individuals we have. Also, we are looking, of course, uh, um, what are they eating? We look in the diet uh, of the of the pine marten and the foxes. Uh, what kind of animals do they eat? Then we have the monitor of the ungulates. Here you see a red deer, a male red deer. Um, who has, uh, uh, where we, this one we are following by radio track, tracking because he would like to know how big is the home range, where are they walking, and um, they're often in the Kapakali area or not. And also we are looking after the insects because uh, it's important to know because it's uh, the food for the, for the chicken, for the chicks. Um, and um, uh, this is also one of our monitoring. Important is that all the research and uh, monitoring we are doing is not um, for an academical career or a PhD or so. We are doing this to improve the management for the couple. So um, uh, our management all is evidence-based and uh, we would know new things that maybe can um, improve the habitat of these of this bird. Now we are coming to the habitat management. Of course, we want to maintain the habitats we have. We want to improve them. We want to expand them. And very important is we want to link all the habitats. So there is no fragmentation or something like that. Um, we want to stop the negative population tendency. And of course, we want to stabilize the population we have at the moment. Um, there we have uh, three phases. Um, number one, maintenance improvement. 
of the distribution area where they are at the moment, where are the, the core distribution of the copper Kali. The second one, uh, improve the areas which are sparsely settled. And the last one, we want to rest, uh, do a restoration of the areas which are unsettled at the moment, whereas in the past, um, there were a couple of Kalis, but at the moment they're unsettled. These are often the gaps between the distribution. We would uh, give the dispersed uh, uh, possibility to display and uh, to do a successful mating. And of course, so the most important thing, a successful breeding. If you look now on a graph here um, uh, on the left side, uh, you see a, a model of a leg and its surrounding. Uh, it's an easy graph. If you see the if you see the green areas, this is the area was is a very good habitat. The white area is uh, where the habitat is not good. And if you compare the two graphs, you see um, that the that the areas or the territories, if the habitat is not so good, are much bigger. Um, this is also our idea that we make uh, Capacali management habitat improvement around the legs um, uh, on a large scale because uh, that we uh, manage the legs and also the breeding areas to improve the situation that the uh, birds have also the space they needed to survive. Um, here you see, can see some pictures how it looks like when it's the habitat is overgrowing, for example. I said the spruce is uh, growing very fast. Often uh, um, uh, it's uh, a layer under the tree layer and um, um, it's so overgrowing that the uh, um, blueberries, uh, for the blueberries, it's, um, they have no chance. Uh, as uh, to uh, survive here as well. In many areas, we have very dense thickets where it's not possible to, to fly anymore and so on. And also you see a colleague of mine here on the right side, he's covered from the blueberries, the most of him. Um, here, are, if you can read the scale, it's 90 centimeters. So we have, it's very high, it's, it's too high. You have to, to think about, for example, we have in the, it was uh, in 21, there was a cold spring, early summer, and, it's about, and it was very wet. So the chickens were all the, uh, the chicks were all the time wet and um, they had no possibility to try because uh, the vegetation was, was absolutely too high. And in the forest we had, uh, they had no chance um, to try, and this is uh, this is a big problem in our area. Also, what we are doing um, is a wood pasture for the habitat improvement. It's about at the moment it's about two hundred hectares, uh, especially in the open areas and the, the the forest on the on the edge. Um, we do this with cattle, sheep, and also horses. Um, and if you have a look at these four pictures here, this is ungrazed, for example, absolutely high grasses, high vegetation. Um, if, we, uh, if, if there is grazing, you see there's much more structure. Uh, we see that the ground is a little bit more open. The vegetation is not so high. It's a much better uh, Capacali habitat. Um, if you are looking a little bit closer, um, here you can see the, um, uh, the open ground. Uh, on this place, there was also um, evidence of Capacali, but this, uh, it's not able to see in this picture. And here you can directly compare it on the left side is ungrazed, on the right side is grazed. Um, uh, we see uh, um, there's a big difference. What we would like to have is to create a forest uh, which have a lot of structure, what I told at the beginning of, of my talk, when I said um, we want to have different ages, um, we want uh, different uh, tree species, we want to have um, open crowd, we want to have different height uh, from the vegetation and so on. For example, <laughs> this picture, 
we have birch in it, we have spruce in it, uh, we have um, uh, pine in it, uh, somewhere is also roan and so on. We have dead wood. So there are a lot of um, uh, a lot of structure in it. What is not so good is also in some parts the vegetation is uh, is too high. Next picture the same. You you can see the regeneration. Um, the the branches uh, are deep to the ground. We also gave a good shelter to the birds. Um, we have old trees in many different species and also with a different vegetation. But also on this picture, you can see it, it's also high, it's also high the vegetation. The next one, the same. I coming back. Yeah. Um, we have uh, here uh, a lot of lying dead wood. Also, this is it's, it's open. Um, the sun is coming in. It's good for the insects. It's good for the for the food for the chicks, for example. There's shelter. There's uh, there's everyone what the capacity needs. Um, here you can also see different stages um, in this forest. It's open, old growth. We have um, higher density. We have lower uh, um, higher vegetation, lower vegetation. Here, for example, we have um, uh, we have um, much more on the right side, uh, much more open forest and old growth forest. This is on a leg from us. Here, the capercaillie males can see far. They can see each other. They can hear each other. Um, it's uh, good uh, good for them. You have a picture what's from this leg. Then the other side, we support whenever we can the broad leaves. Um, it's very important as uh, as food for the capercaillies, um, especially when the when the buds are opening. Um, it's very uh, nutritious, um, and they need it, especially in spring after the hard time in winter, because in winter time they just can eat the needles. In our case, uh, especially the uh, needles um, uh, of the spruce, and this is very has a, a low energy level. And of course, uh, especially the hands uh, have to be in a very good condition um, uh, in the breeding season. Then you also see a little bit a picture like you saw before. It's a little bit open. We have small trees. We have uh, larger trees. We have dead wood and so on. This was, for example, a place uh, from a breeding area. You can see here there's a hen uh, breeding under dead wood. And here, I hope you can see it soon. Yes, you can see it under, under a tree with, um, where, where, uh, where the hen had a good shelter. Ah, come on. OK. So what we like to have is structure, structure, structure. Uh, what I said before, um, give the couple everything they need for feeding, shelter, and protection. Um, now, um, in the last week, I saw a lot of forests uh, in your area. Uh, it, it, I was very impressed by the old pine forest, of course, as a German uh, from the Black Forest. We don't have such forests um, uh, like you have. Um, uh, but um, uh, the I was shocked by the header. It was so high. Um, I uh, I didn't know this, and um, and also the the forests often have not the structure the capercaillie would like to have. So it's very homogeneous, for example. And but uh, I know that. Uh, that uh, in the management of you, um, you you do a lot. That you uh, will have more structure in your forest. For example, grazing with cattle. You will see in Abernessy where you have uh, open spaces on the ground, open ground, and also uh, working with the robocutter, for example, that the vegetation is uh, a little bit lower. And also by uh, Pulling down some trees, for example, um, 
that you imitate uh, something like a little um, wind blow or so that the Kapakeli can use um, the stones that can have dust passing and so on. And also something like this in a little bit, um, little bit more. Um, here's also imitation of a, of a little wind blow to give structure to the forest. Or you curl them to produce um, that wood. Now, of course, for the, we go back to the Black Forest. Um, we were thinking about we bring cattle in the forest and we do so much lot for habitat improvement. What about our deer? Um, we have animals, we have wild animals. Can we use them? It would be better to use them than that we use uh, cattle, for example. Can red deer has a function as a habitat engineer was our question. We did a camera trapping survey. We were exactly in the same forests in Kapakeli areas, the same age, the, the same three species. The only difference was the height of the bilberry had a different. So we had in, in one part of the forest, they were up to 30 to 50 centimeters on the under 50 to 70 centimeter. And the other one was over 70 centimeter. Now, if you look at the graph, um, we looked at all the pictures and uh, calculated how many percentage of the pictures is the, is the feeding behavior of the red deer, for example. Here you can see um, when the vegetation high or the, the blueberry high was just 30 to 50 centimeters, there were uh, 30 percentages of all um, pictures we, we could see that the red deer were grazing. As I can see it, you not. <laughs> Wait, I hope the technique will help me a lot. Okay. No. Ah, we are back here. Yeah. And you see, if it's up to uh, from 50 to 70, there was about um, between 50 and 20 percentages were feeding um, pictures, but over 70, we had just six or seven uh, uh, percentages of the pictures were feeding pictures. And if you look at the habitat suitable index, Searching. <clears throat> All right, the technique. Okay, you're back. If you see um, if the vegetation height is between 70 and 80 centimeters, um, the habitat suitable index is very low. So the best thing is between 30 and 50 centimeters. What we can see there is red deer will not browse the high blueberries to improve the habitat because they are sick, they are hard, they don't like to eat it. So if we want to reduce the high vegetation in this uh, uh, in these areas, we have to do it with robo cutting, brush saw, for example, or cattle. If, but uh, for us, it was interesting how many deers do we have? And if you look at the northern part of the Black Forest, um, uh, we did a uh, survey for the red deer density. And you see in the northeastern part, where it's a little bit more darker, there are more red deer. Uh, in the lighter square kilometers, it's less deer. And then we are looking where the national park is in the area where we do not have so many deers. We calculated it and we have about two red deer a square kilometer. And this is too low for the Kapakeli. This is low deer numbers indicate high vegetation because it's growing faster um, that they can browse. 
you can, I hope you will see it very soon. I try to do my best. The slide is coming back. Okay. No signal. Ah, come on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have low deer numbers, um, uh, we have a higher vegetation. The habitat suitability um, is reduced. Uh, and also, if, it's, if the habitat suitability is reduced, you have also higher sensitivity to the predation. All right. No signal. Sorry for this. Oh, come on. Okay, we are back. So <laughs> I was I was happy for two seconds. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wait. Um, uh, but what you would like to do is that in the around the legs and in the breeding areas, we do not want to hunt anymore because we want to concentrate numbers of red uh, uh, red deer, for example, in the kappa area um, to minimize the upcoming vegeta vegetation. We said uh, before the high vegetation. Um, uh, they will not browse, so um, uh, we have to cut this vegetation and when it's growing again, then the capicale will browse. This is the idea. What we are doing, and this is why we are, do not uh, any hunt in these areas at the moment. And then we, uh, we do a, um, a monitoring for the hoofed animals. And if the density is too low, then we have to... Uh, um, uh, uh, overlook our management, of course. And I, okay. Okay, he's searching. No bro, no signal. <laughs> Searching. Okay. And these are pictures we would like to have. This is on our best leg. Um, uh, there we have eight males. It's the best leg in the whole black forest. Um, and these are pictures we would like to have that they, uh, uh, that also the red deer has their, their refugees. Uh, they come by day. Um, uh, uh, they they come to eat, um, sleep, or what else. Here you see um, a female and and her calf. They were every day um, uh, by the camera. There was nice social behavior. Uh, the calf was drinking and so on. And also you see the vegetation there is not so high. There's also a little bit more structure. And this is what we like to have in the Kabakeli area. Um, what we are doing in the wildlife management uh, from the beginning of the National Park, we started um, uh, from the 1st of August because we didn't want um, to make too much disturbance uh, during the breeding season. Now, we do not hunt anymore in the Kapokeli area, but also in the past, we, we looked at uh, will, uh, will not disturb them. Um, in Germany, it's uh, famous to do uh, um, uh, driven hunts in autumn and winter time. 
we will not do this in Kabakali area. Um, no hunting around legs and breeding areas. Um, and we do no snow cleaning for hunting. So we have, uh, it could be in the Black Forest so at the end of October or at the beginning of November, we have snow. Um, we have a lot of snow. And in the early times, uh, we clean the snow to come in the forest and that we, uh, that we could hunt. The problem is if we are cleaning the tracks and the forest grounds, the people walk in. So um, this is uh, why we decided um, if we cannot drive with the car, we go no more in the area. We would like to give the Capacali refugees in the sense they fly fast as well, that we give the red deer the refugees for feeding the bilberry. Wildlife uh, management, it was of course not only red deer management, it's also um, a predator control, for example. What about the predator control? How does it look like in Germany? We have here in the middle the Kabakali, and now we are looking what do we have in the Black Forest? So we have as potential um, uh, predator, we have wolf and lynx, we have some wildcats we have, we have foxes, we have pine marten, we have weasel, polecat, badger, Wild boars are also a big discussion. Is are there they could be um, predator for the for the nest and for the egg. And of course we have birds of prey. Um, we have raven, we have goshawk, we have the eagle owl, and so on and so on. So we have a lot of different um, predators, and they could all have impact on the Kabukali. Now um we see, for example, some pictures from a dust bath. You should see a Capacali hen. It was in 2020, the 3rd of July. She was sitting there at 90, uh, 7 20 p.m. In the, in the same night, they're the coming a predator and smelling exactly on, the, on this side where the hen was sitting. So we see the predators. Um, uh, um, uh, are looking, of course, after the Capacali. We have it, for example, the Pine Martin, often discussed. Um, here is a, a video from a camera trap. It's also um, on a sun bus. You can also see the, the feathers in the background. And all the, here you can see smelling exactly where the Capacali was sitting hours before. We checked everything, looking around and also is marking. <laughs> so the predators know the area very well, of course. The same we had on a, on a leg, for example. Also here can look at the date. It was uh, about um, five, uh, pa half past five in the morning. One hour later, there was coming a, a fox smelling exactly on the same place, but one hour later, the kappa male was coming back and displaying, so he don't care about it. So now we have to look, we have a lot of predators um, who could have impact on the kappa Kali, but also the predators can have impact on them. And this is also a very interesting thing but we would to like would to know a little bit more about it. We know from the from the scat from the wolf, for example, that he is eating fox. Uh, there was in wild uh, not wild cat house cat was for example in and so on. And if you look at every species, every predator we have, you will have a crazy picture. A lot. So now we don't see anything. <laughs> It's, it's a hard to get network and the, in the, uh, by the interaction between the predators, we do not know enough. Um, we have a lot of them that can impact, uh, have impact on the Capacali, but maybe they can also have impact on them, uh, on them each other. We do not know. But what we are know is that we have a lot of them. In fact, is if we had no predator, there were no predation, of course. It's the same if we had no robbers, there were no robbery, of course. Um, but 
um, uh, if you uh, will control predators, you have also to think big, you have to include all of them. And always the target species is uh, um, in the middle. So the target species should benefit from the uh, predator control. And this is what important is we have to do it. If we do it, we need the right action at the right time. Risk, because the risk of predation should be minimized in the breeding season that we have a better productivity. But the question is, can we manage it? Or is it action What is about the interaction between the predators? Very complex. Now we look at our predators, the wolf protected. I cannot do anything. Lynx protected. Wildcats protected. Eagle Oil protected. Gossa protected. Raven protected. Okay, now just four left. Now we are looking um, the badger. It's it's here a discussed topic. In our area, we have in the Capacali area not so many badger because we, have, we are in our Capacali areas between 70, 750, 800 meters above sea level up to over 1,000. Doesn't matter for us at the moment. Fox, we just can hunt till the 15th of February. The same to Pai Martin, it's too early. The only animal which is in a very low number in our area is the wild boar, but we can hunt the whole year. So now you see it's everything is not so easy in Germany. So what can we say? We can, from our hunting law, we can control foxes, we can control badger, we can uh, control pine marten, but we cannot do it in the right time. And we have also protected um, predators. We are not allowed to use deadly traps for the pine marten. It's very important. You can put a trap, for example, on a branch or something like that. And he get, uh, is climbing and then you will catch him. And um, it was done in the past very successfully, but we are not allowed to do it. Also, what, uh, what happened in Germany, for example, we had traps for fox cubs, because if you, if you want to control the fox, you have to kill the fox cubs. So it's very important. Um, we had there a cage, all the young foxes could go in. You, you were able to control them all. We are not allowed to do anymore. And so we have a lot of more things uh, what we are not allowed to do. So it's in Germany very um, uh, difficult to control bad predators in a way the Capacali can benefit from. Okay, I said this. Now um, uh, our game law is very strict because um, uh, there is the opposition between the game law on the animal welfare versus the predator control. And the question all the time is, what about Gossok? What about the other protected species? Do we need uh, permissions for them or not? What should we do? And the big question at the moment in Germany is, is it possible to manage a predator in a way that Capacati can benefit from? Or should we find um, alternatives? And what about the interaction? At the moment, we uh, um, uh, had no other chance to find alternatives to minimize predation effect. So we are, for example, we built uh, several small biotopes for several food supply, for example, little water where, for frogs and so on, what the, uh, what the um, predator are also eating, maybe just to think about like re relocation of Pine Martin in your area, in our area, uh, there is no discussion because we have them everywhere. Um, and or we improve the habitat um, uh, to create structures predator do not like, for example, um, and also do a lot of more research. Because, and this is the most important thing, the Kappa has no time anymore 
um, and we cannot wait for some political discussions. We have to do what we can do. And now the question, of course, what about visitor guidance? Is there a link between mortality and visitor, for example? And now you remember what I said several minutes before, when I said our forests are very dense and uh, the hen and the chicken, for example, had not, no, not a chance to try in the forest at the moment. Um, and if it's rainy and so on, they have to go on the tracks from the forest, the forest roads, because it's the only chance that they can try out in our uh, black forest. Um, because uh, forest tracks and roads, um, this is open space, the light come in, and also there are a lot of insects for feeding. Um, and now we are coming uh, to the visitor. If the birds are going on the road and tracks, um, there can, could be a problem that they come together, visitors and other humans and um, the capercaillie. Here you see some pictures how it looks like, for example, in winter time. It's a, it's a uh, completely um, uh, chaos. Um, uh, sometimes if there's a uh, somebody had an accident by skiing or so, um, there's no chance to get them out of the, um, in the car from the ambulance or so, because everywhere are standing cars. Um, if you look at this, remember we have 10,000 hectares from, Julie, uh, from uh, July 90 to uh, June uh, 2020, we had over 800,000 visitors, one year later it was over an, a million. So we have a pressure on the area. Now we have a quickly look on the map of the national park. And these are all roads we have. And if you, we, they have done a buffer around these uh, tracks to look a buffer from 100 meters and say, how many space do we have 100 meters away from the tracks uh, where it's absolutely silent. Now these are the green areas. You can search how many you will find. <laughs> um, we have a lot of tracks in, in the German in Germany in the forest. You see, um, this is why we have to think about uh, visitor guidance. I said before we make everything um, evidence based, and we have done a um, uh, a survey by camera traps uh, at legs and uh, uh, the tracks close to the legs or tracks who were going through the legs. The green um, or the graph, the left side, uh, the, uh, the green areas are the activity from the uh, uh The yellow area are the activity from the people. And now you see um, in, on our legs often there's a, a mating between 9, 10, 11 to 12, uh, often 12 o'clock. But it's also when the people are um, uh, on their walk. So um, it could be that there is a disturbance. And this is for us important because um, then we have also some rules um, because we know we have to avoid uh, the disturbance, uh, which is. Um, it could be happen. Um, in our national park, for example, just are allowed to walk on the tracks. You are not you are not allowed to roam in the whole national park. The closure of forest road um, to reduce the density of tracks. So we put some of the of the tracks out. Then we have temporary closure of uh, trails and tracks in winter time. So up from the 15th of November, you remember I said uh, in November time, it could be snowy, very snowy. We close a lot of tracks. You see it later on the map up to the mid of March. Extra time, extra time, temporary closure, for example, in the sensitive areas, uh, Kabakali areas, where is the leak, or where's the breeding area? We also um, uh, close the roads when the birds are there. When there is, for example, a lack, where is no more in copper, of course, we do not close it. 
uh, dogs, also a topic in Germany. Um, uh, uh, all the people must uh, keep them on, uh, on lead in the national park. Uh, so the dog, it's not allowed to have the dog somewhere in the forest. We have a uh, cover guarding at Lex. This means at the entrance of the uh, of the national park, for example, when the uh, uh, during the mating season there are the field ranger who uh, are looking that nobody is walking inside the, the Lex. But what we always have, if we close a road, we always try to give the people alternative route so that I don't walk and there is a sign stop go back so that because they all have the time to make their walks of course because it's very important for us that the people have the nature experience but on the under, other side uh, we would like to have the conservation in the national park what we also are doing is removal of tracks for example you see you can see a bugger here on the on the left picture um uh, there is uh the track how it's be and after work from the from the bucket it looks like the right uh right picture so we said to the operator i uh, pull some stones in it's put some tree and it does it looks a little bit uh wild and this is the next picture on the left side there is a track and on the right side there were a track one year before so this is this is how it looks like um, after one year when you, you removed a track. These are also nice structures we have there in. Um, uh, uh, we have the little water holes, we have stones in it, um, we have dead wood in it, for example. And these are often uh, what we uh, observed, often the cuppers use this um, removed tracks, but the predator, for example, they walk the uh, the, the road because it was easier to walk in. So all it's also a, a type of uh, predator management. So um, uh, objectives, what I said, people should have nature experience. It's very important, they should have it. But on the other side, there's the conservation for nature without the turban. We remember this uh, map of, of tracks from the National Park at the beginning. Then we removed some of them. Uh, and this is done in the summertime. You see there are a lot of more green areas, uh, a lot of more refugees for the wild animals. In winter time, I said it before, we also closed more tracks and it looks like these. Uh, so if you compare the left picture and the right picture, you see there's much more silence uh, in the woods. <laughs> but of course, um, uh, uh, we uh, have the communication to the people. So we have an indirect um, visitor, visitor information. For example, we have trainings with education, with pupils. Uh, we make guided tours. We have, of course, um, uh, maps, flyers, and so on. And on the other side, uh, there's the direct visitor information. And what we are also doing, we have um, beforehand information, for example, on the web page, there's everything is written there. For example, where are the interesting points? Where can you park public transport events and so on and so on. And also when we close tracks, we give the information to them and also where's the alternative route um, that they can see it before they are going in the forest. And also what we are doing before the mating season or before the breeding season, um, there's a little article in the local um, newspaper where we uh, write a lot about why we need the capocale, um, uh, the silence and, and why is the disturbance um, or should we minimize the disturbance so the people uh, um, know it. And we have a big visitor center, of course, capocale is also a big part of it. There, uh, there's a lot about the behavior in it, and um, and also why it's uh, um, sensitive species and so on. Information on site also very important. Important basic information at the parking places where the people started their um, their uh, 
the walking tours, for example, here you can see how you can walk, you can see where are the way is going, and yeah, that trail management for routing, for example. Then we have the direct uh, direct visitor guidance, of course. Uh, we have uh, we have field rangers uh, in the park. One field rangers uh, for a thousand hectares, so about the rules. So, and then make informations. Uh, information, make guided tours, make uh, visitor guidance, for example, and also have the right for the law enforcement. Then, of course, by the guided tours, um, uh, we're uh, talking a lot about uh, the Kapokadi that the people uh, know a lot about is they can ask their questions and so on. That will bring the Kapokadi also closer um, to the visitor. And also, of course, we have these are on a, on a closed road in winter, uh, a big banner has written protected wildlife area, do not enter. On the other side, also, we are in the field with um, stuffed Kapokali, male and female. People can look how big they are. They can learn a lot about them. Also, we try to um, give information that they know why we, we are closing roads for them. So the guiding of physicists is for us a mandatory. And if you look, we have every year we have more people. If you look at the offenses in Kapakali area, we, we are seeing the, we have less than years before. So maybe it is working, the, all the information we are doing. Of course, what we are doing uh, in our project, um, we're working together with volunteers. So we do habitat improvement with them, for example, then I Tell them also things about our project, um, what we will do, why are we doing it. Um, so they can be part of the Kappa project and the conservation. And this helps by the awareness for the Kappa uh, in the Black Forest. If we uh, make a little summary, we have uh, similar challenges in both countries but other point of departures. Our high vegetation, for example, is the blueberry. We have a lot of them. You, your high vegetation is, for example, the heather and so on. Um, uh, we have, um, uh, maybe we have more structures in the forest than you, but our forests are denser than yours. So uh, it's the, the similar topics, but on another point of departure. What can we do now? Um, Normally, it's too late for the uh, political discussions. Of course, they, uh, um, they have to be done, for example, by the predator management. But um, immediate action is required, so we cannot wait anymore. We have to do anything. We should do what we can. Um, uh, what we are doing at the moment is um, uh, immediately improvement of forest structure on a large scale. It's for us the most important thing at the moment. And of course, the refugees where we were talking about in the last minutes. Um, and we only protect what we like. And I, and I hope you all like the Kapokali. And every county can make a contribution to Kapokali conservation, not only the people who are um, uh, um, cutting trees or cutting head out, what else? Everybody can have a contribution. And Important is what I said, we uh, protect what we like and fasten the black forest is cup of culture and history. Um, and we have always keep in mind not a couple is crossing the road here, but we are crossing his habitat. This is what we uh, have to think about it. I'm sure that I and all of you here would like to see that the next generations also know that pictures like these are happening in the forests. <laughs> you can see, we want, to, we want to see that they can behave like they want, have a nice behavior, fight for their hands. You have to look in the background. 
later there is happening something special. Two are fighting, another one see his chance in several seconds. <laughs> Okay, now this is the same situation, but the other camera trapped, and you now you can see it a little bit better. What was happening? The fight, we remember. And now it's following a, a very funny um, situation in a few seconds because one couple is coming back and realized what, what was happening. Too late one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have no sound here, but uh, in the sound you hear now, buff, 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 <laughs> like they are fighting. So, okay, thank you very much. This is awesome. <laughs>
was at the beginning of May, for example. Now it's about the 20th of April. We see it's earlier. Um, and then we have, uh, we have to see what is the vegetation um, doing, for example. In our region at the moment, um, we uh, could not see that another vegetation <coughs> is coming in, but I know from Bavaria, they have problems with brumbles, for example, that brumbles is coming in. Um, and then also what is important, how is the weather or what, what, what makes the climate change during the breeding season when the, when the chicks are very small. Um, we don't know what is happening. Two years ago, it was, it was very rainy, very cold. Every chicks were dying. So it's a to total disaster. The last year, for example, in Germany, it was very hot. It was dry. And uh, we saw a lot of couple chicks, for example. We do not know what is happening. Um, but this, uh, the impact will be uh, from, the, from the climate change, of course. But it could be better or worse. Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, about engaging with visitors and everybody from a long way away. What are your relationships like with local landowners, farmers, hunters? Like the, the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we are at the moment, uh, we are talking a lot with them because uh, I told in a slide at the beginning of the, of the talk that the people like Kabakeli very much. It's very important for them. And at the moment, they are very unhappy um, uh, that the numbers are so declining. So we have uh, uh, communications with each other. So um, often hunter or forester from uh, uh, the state forest, for example, uh, they come to us, we are talking with each other, we say, look, uh, we are doing it like this way and say, oh, nice, um, we try the same or whatever. So we are, in, uh, we have in the whole Black Forest uh, Cavalcade <laughs> community, something like that, where we met several times and um, uh, talk with each other and we want to improve it together. Yes, I have a problem with that. Just a minute, please. I thought, I thought your section of the predation was fairly interesting, uh, but I wasn't quite sure what your conclusion was at the end of it, but in terms of your action plan. I mean, were you basically saying the ecological complexity of predation or the political difficulty means that you don't have any actions, or are you pursuing any actions within that section of the um, uh, at the moment, there are no actions because uh, it's uh, difficult with the, with the game law. Um, but this, there are discussions and maybe something will change. Um, uh, but the most important thing is that I uh, cannot wait for this. So um, uh, we, will not, we would like to do now what we can to do. So this is habitat improvement or the terms, but this is a very, um, uh, this is a topic we have also in Germany. It's very emotional, um, but this is on the political side. <laughs> For some time we've been having problems with predation or loss of chicks through ticks. Yes, ticks, yeah. yes. And Dr. Bob Moss, who did surveys in this area quite a while ago, mm -hmm. he found that sometimes the poles were so the burden mm -hmm. the were so mm -hmm. bad they couldn't see predators coming. And mm -hmm. that led to quite high mortality. Because of the ticks? Yeah. Well, it, no, yeah. The ticks were the yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, you, you were right, this is uh, also uh, a discussion about the ticks because um, there are a lot more ticks now than before. But it's very difficult to measure this. And what can we do? Keith. Uh, if you could imagine that you had a clean sheet and you were allowed to control predation, what would be the first thing you'd do? If you would, uh, if you could control them, um, uh, of course, it's uh, very important uh, what I said that we don't just have to look on one predator. We have to look on more. Um, and also that we can do it in a way um, 
that cover benefit from it. And this would be maybe a way the uh, the public don't like. Um, if, uh, for example, um, we have uh, uh, on the Fox side, for example, it's very important uh, that we have to control uh, the cups, for example. This is uh, this is a, the, a thing what we have to do because um, the Wixen, the Fox Wixen, um, um, did not um, distinguish between one cup or five. She could bring all the time the same food. So we have, if we would uh, have it in a, that we can, the cover can benefit, we have to uh, um, hunt all the cups, for example. This would be a very, very important thing. Um, at the moment, we need uh, uh, special permits. We could have in Kapakeli area, but on the other side, another problem, uh, problem is that the hunting season is too short. So we also, if we, if the, the politicians say you are allowed to hunt, then they have to change uh, uh, the law or, or what else with a special permit to do it longer. And that's of, of course, then you have also to hunt for pine marten and so on. But this is very difficult, yeah. these discussions. And uh, because this is, I think uh, it's also a hard discussions um, on the political side because they think about what should we do. There's the animal welfare, there's the capacity. Can we shoot pregnant foxes for the capacity or not? It's their decision. We just can say what we think is the best for the capacity. Yes. Do you think that an increasing population of large carnivores, so the wolves and the lynx, do you anticipate that having an effect on the muso predators that will then have an effect on the capacity? Um, I think it could, <laughs> uh, because um, uh, I uh, told it before, or I said it to somebody before the talk, um, when we collected the scats for the wolf, for example, uh, when there was a lot of red deer in, there was also a lot of fox in, because then the, the wolf was coming three or four days to the kill, and the kill attracts also uh, the meso predators, and then there was the food competition. Um, and then they kill the foxes. The same told some uh, colleagues of mine from Switzerland with lynx and foxes, and they killed roe deer. So there could be an impact. Um, and this is what I said before, we have to keep this in mind and also make research for it. Maybe it could, because this is also in a difference between Black Forest and here in Scotland. Um, you, have to, you have a lot of badgers here in our area, Badgers is not so important. And we have a lot of more predators like you have here. I think that's it. Well, Raphael, your knowledge and your passion for the subject shone through all of that. It was a superb presentation. And I'm sorry about the, the no technology problem. there. No problem. If you just wait for one moment, I think. Uh, uh, well, this is a, just a small token uh, of our appreciation. But thank, thank you a lot. Thank you, so thank you a lot. I, I think I might be corrected here, but of the 20 or more years that we've uh, been holding these talks, I think you have the award for traveling the furthest to, to give this, this talk. So congratulations as well. And I think there's something else coming your way now. Just a little extra. Um, I think the Kappa Kaylee group in Carbridge will correct me, but I think one of these might be in the Black Forest already. But maybe that's 98 lecking males in the Black Forest. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just want to say thank you as well, Raphael, for coming across thank from you. my own home country. We actually speak the same dialect which means that actually no German could understand what we're saying, let alone uh, Pitland's country. And I've got three more uh, for you. Ah, perfect. There you go. Now we are over 100. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
you. So you won't remember much about your returning home tomorrow. Yeah, so it'll be all in the blur. But a superb presentation. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. And then um, there is a, a merchandise table here, folks. So please have a look at that uh, as you go out. There are lots of uh, shiny, shiny things that uh, look, look very attractive. And our next talk in, in two weeks' time, um, 13th of March, is by Dr. Kerry Langbridge, and she's the conservation manager for the Highland Wildlife Park, and she's talking about saving the wildlife, I say, sorry, saving wildlife project, and it's about the wild cat. So that's in two weeks this evening. Please come along if you can. That's all from us. Thank you again for supporting us, and safe travels.